oil-based color. There are many ranges of oil-based colors, and again, some in tubes, some in sticks, and some in cakes. And you need to understand these paints, although they can be harder to use. Their usefulness comes because they're waterproof, so good for extreme situations or when working with water and sweat. But also blending is fabulous. The colors can be strong and bright. The exercises here give you an opportunity to discover how to overcome the challenges. Working the color in the same way as water-based cake, load your brush. Here, I'm using a smaller brush. It's about three quarters of an inch because the paint is thicker, so the smaller brush works better. Again, keep the edges clean and clear and use the brush to do so. Black is a good color to start with. It's messy and high contrast, so it's easy to see how well you're covering the skin. Here, we're going to do a strong blend, black to gray to white. Make sure the coverage is good. And don't let the black and the white mix at this point. It's really important to keep the cake of white paint clean. And now using the black brush, blend the colors together. See how I use the brush in both directions. I'm pulling the paint up and I'm dragging it down and I'm using the brush to blend the paint. I'm not actually adding any more paint. And there you can see the gray appearing. But the interesting thing with this color range is I can do a lot of work with the powdering afterwards. I'm now using a tissue to help me pull the white up and extend the gray further down. So I'm cleaning the brush. I'm using my fingers and I'm really softening the gradation. I'm also bringing in a little bit more color, putting my finger into the paint just to soften the mixing. Keep your hands as clean as possible. I always use brushes for powdering. And here I'm not using a transparent powder, I'm actually using a white powder and I'm helping to blend the colors together by pulling that white powder up and pressing it into the skin. And now, with a slightly smaller brush, because black powder is horrible, I'm bringing down the black color. The black powder goes everywhere. It's very unforgiving. It stains, it spreads, it makes a real mess. So by doing the white powder first, the lower color first, I can powder above and the black powder will fall on already powdered areas. It won't damage or discolor the white oil paint. There's a real trick with this powdering issue. And now I'm bringing in more white powder to increase the gray. Then using a soft brush, remove the excess powder. and then cleaning up the edges, keeping it clean with the tissue. We're going to come back to this later with another technique. So just make sure that your edges are clean. 
A cotton bud inserted into a wet wipe is a fantastic way of cleaning up the edges. Four squares. We are now going to discover the joys and challenges of powdering oil color. Choose four opposing oil colors and using a three quarters of an inch flat square ended brush, I want you to paint four large squares next to each other. Two on top, two below, so that the edges touch as much as possible. Keep all the lines strong and clean and make sure you have an even coverage. The squares need to be quite large. The whole of the forearm is going to be taken up by these four squares. Remember to really work the paint and to make sure that the brush is well loaded, just as you would do with the watercolour. This really helps to get an even coverage. This is a very good way to practice lining up colors together. It's very, very good brush experience, putting the colors next to each other without pulling in the opposing color. Make sure that your coverage is as good as this, that you can't see the skin through the color. The interesting thing about this paint is that it's completely movable and you can continue playing around with it until you set it. It's only when you powder it that you make the chemical reaction that makes it immovable. So you do have a lot more time This exercise really helps you to learn about matching colors together, meeting up at perfect straight lines. And using body painter's brushes, flat, square-ended brushes, it's quite easy. If you are using makeup brushes, which are angled and layered, you'll probably find it very difficult. But notice how strong and clear the colors are. But also, they're shiny. So sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it's not. Once they're powdered, they will mat down. So applying the last square of color, hopefully you're able to keep up at the same speed. Really make sure that your edges are clean. Notice how I'm supporting her arm. I've got my arms quite close against my body so that I'm not shaking and trembling. I'm not reaching far away from my body to paint. It helps to make straight lines. If you find that you're behind, just press the pause button and continue at your own pace until you catch up. And now the powdering. Here I'm using powders that match the colors that I've painted. 
This section partly is to help you to understand how you can change the color with the powder. Using a small brush so the powder doesn't go everywhere, really go up to the edges of the neighboring color and pressing the color in, make sure that there's no shininess left. Make sure that you really have covered the whole area with the powder. If you can't get hold of the powder in a cosmetic form, you could also use a non-toxic children's poster paint, poster paint in powder form. This does just as good a job. Using a much smaller brush here now, I'm going right into the corners. Because if this was something that you'd done for filming, after a few hours, the colors would bleed together if they weren't properly powdered. Notice how I'm using a finer brush for the edges and then brushing off the excess powder. And also notice that I've powdered the lower portion first. And now notice how the red powder is falling down onto the green below. But because I've powdered the green, I can just brush the red powder off. And again, with a smaller brush, I'm meeting the blue, keeping it very clean, but also keeping the colors very strong and pure. And I'm using the green brush to brush the red paint off. If I had used the red brush on the green powder, I would have created a rather lovely brown smudge. And now on the next section again, I'm starting with the lower color, powdering the yellow, pressing the powder really deeply into the skin. and using a finer brush for the detail. And notice how each powder, I end up using two brushes, one fine one to get right up to the edge and a slightly larger one to do the bigger area of coverage. Notice that while I work, I've kept all the different powder brushes in my hand, so I'm quite free to move through the different colors, tidying up as I go along. And now, to powder the blue, I'm using a transparent powder. It may look white, but it's a translucent powder. And if you've been doing something with a lot of detail, with a lot of light and shade and different colors all together, this is a much better option for powdering. As you can see, you can just apply the powder directly. But what you'll also notice as I start to brush off the excess is that it's a lot more work to clean up and to maintain the original intensity of color. The best way to deal with this, this whiteness that you can see, this sort of chalkiness, and it's a tip that works in all extreme powdering situations, is either to spray with a water spray and press with a tissue, take off the excess powder, or to put a damp tissue on it and soften the excess powder. But you can notice how the blue is a little bit flatter, although from here the intensity is still good. <laughs> 